Welcome to the culture of you. Meaningful dialogue with me and my favorite people. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the culture of you. I am your host, Karen Hewitt. And today I am joined by none other than Javier Sanchez, CEO, founder of Reach Communications where they do actionable marketing and messaging strategies. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. He's a youth facilitator, practitioner, and mentor, a creative. We absolutely got to talk about that. Artist, poet, author, former rapper, I believe, uh, filmmaker, and comedian, current comedian. Uh, I I like to call him a vibe and culture alchemist. I think that's a really cool title. And I'm going to just give that to you right now. You're welcome. And then um, also does some travel guiding through Africa. So we're, we may talk about that a little bit. It's a wonder I could get on his schedule. He's in town. He's in the States. Uh, give it up for Javier Sanchez. How are you? I just got way better yeah. because literally watch what my uh, what is my handle or whatever on mm-hmm. IG is about to say vibe and culture alchemist. Is that? Love it. Does anybody else get that title when they get intro? I mean, I, no, no one has. I, I only see myself in that, but um, oh. but yeah, I, I think you're okay. the only one that's gotten that. I'll say vibe and culture alchemist uh, dot, 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 according to Karen Marie. <laughs> oh, you don't even have to give me that credit. It's real. It's it's happening, whether I say it or not. I bet at first I got to unpack it and figure out what the hell does that <laughs> mean? So <laughs> I, I get a sense. I, you know, I'll use context clues, but wow, mm-hmm. that's dope. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that just yes. It, life in my day to another level. Nice. Um, It's true. So first things first, why did you agree to come on here and talk with me? With you? Have mm-hmm. you met you? <laughs> I it's weird it's a weird construct to think of meeting myself but I think so I consider you to be like uh if I had to label Karen Marie which I know we're not all on label I would call you like a vibe and culture alchemist <laughs> <laughs> and, and so um uh you know you are somebody that I I respect and admire um and I don't use those words like like offhandedly or or just because I can't think of other words, but respect is recognizing someone else's value. Mm-hmm. You have so much value to me. You because you've added so much to my life. You're a value add in my life. And and, and so just anytime I can find ways to connect with you, I'm looking for those opportunities. Um mm-hmm. Because, you know, you know, I know what I bring to the table, but I also know what I receive. And, you know, we have people in our life that that are um, that take more than they give. Um, and then you have people that give more than they take. And those are dope people, too. Um, and, and so I just like our energy exchange. So mm-hmm. anytime we can connect, whether it's uh, at a show, at an event, on the road, we've been on the road together now. Mm-hmm. And, you know, playing poker, whatever it is. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, if I have a chance to at a party, um, yeah. You know, if there's a big crowd of people, I'm gonna gravitate towards you because mm-hmm. uh, I know I'm 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 gonna be good. So if you call, I'm gonna answer. Easy. That's an easy yes. Word. I I'm like now realizing like, am I just compliment seeking? But I do want to know. I know I want to know why people say yes because um, it we're really protective of our nose these days. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I I really appreciate that. And so now that I've donned you a uh, vibe and culture alchemist, um, you know, alchemy is is such a a beautiful, beautiful term. I really love that. But give us some some information. So how would you describe yourself as a vibe personally and professionally? And are they different? Yeah. they can be different um as a vibe um you know i know we know people that when they enter the room they change the energy of that room for better mm-hmm. or worse um uh, and um my goal on a personal level is to um create safe spaces number 1 for me and number 2 for the people that are in my proximity Mm-hmm. Um, and that could be as small of an act as just ha- making sure I have a smile on my face, mm-hmm. you know, instead of, uh, that RBF, 
um, <laughs> or or uh, and I and I have to be mindful and intentional uh, uh, about that. I remember true story like uh, I was doing a comedy show and a homeboy of mine was uh, bringing his girlfriend who they'd been dating for a while and she was bringing a friend that she wanted me to meet right mm -hmm. do the show killed it and uh after the show uh we we hung out at the bar for a minute had uh talked for a few minutes but her her girl was kind of uh, she was trying to wrap wrap the night up <clears throat> uh a little earlier than what i expected and um and then you know, there was just a weird energy. And I remember I talked to him a couple of days later or sometime after that. And uh, he said, uh, I was like, what was up with your girl? Uh, and and, um, and he said, she said, she told my girlfriend, oh man, how did she say it? I've, I've told this story before. I got to get it right. She said, <laughs> he's handsome, but not attractive. And um and I was like, what? <laughs> and she said, he said, when you got to the booth or to the bar, like you, you weren't laughing and you weren't smiling. You was just, and, and it's, I was depleted. Cause when I get on, when I come off stage, the show is over. Yeah. When, I, when I'm, when the show's over, the show's yeah. over. I'm mm -hmm. not going to keep the show going once I get off stage. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think she kind of thought that that guy that was on stage was, the professional dude was going to be the personal dude. And it's not mm -hmm. like, like I try to disappear when I'm off stage. I don't like being in the spotlight mm -hmm. off stage. Um, so I just never heard that phraseology before. He's handsome, but not attractive. And I was like, wow. It's like, oh, so I'm not magnetic and charismatic. Attractive, like mm -hmm. she wasn't drawn to me. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And because I was not because I wasn't telling jokes and keeping the show going, but because I know, I know I was there, not, I was done. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So I'm not, I'm, I want to listen. I want to hear other people's voices. So, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, I probably, again, because I, you know, I was tired, energetic from an energy standpoint, you know, I probably, I wasn't being inquisitive. I wasn't asking questions. I was kind of just there <laughs> and uh, I would respond, uh, you know, I would react, but I wasn't being very proactive. So maybe it was all that, but I know I wasn't smiling, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And, uh, uh, cause he said, you know, so I, like, he, you wouldn't, you wasn't smiling or laughing or anything. That's what he, you weren't, you weren't smiling or laughing or anything. And so I just came, uh, you know, from that, I was like, man, I gotta not keep the show going, but at least keep a smile on my face. Do you feel like any part of that is performative? I'm thinking of all the times that people tell women or, you know, black folks, the, like, the smile, you know, and I'm like, oh, um, but like, do you feel like because I, I was at Wonder Ball, right? Mm -hmm. And I performed and like before the show, I'm like getting my head together. People were coming up to me and talking to me. And I was like, eh, like, I, I really don't want that energy. Like, I want to get in my sweet spot, right, for performance. And then afterwards, we walked around a little bit and I was like, yo, I got to go. Like, I can't I can't be in that. Like, I'm coming down. I'm, I'm a little overstimulated. So like, I need to go. Do you feel like if you are going into a situation, especially when your friend is introducing you to someone else, or it's someone new that you're meeting that you feel like there's like a performative aspect of that? Yeah. Um, and I, I don't want to be, I know, we know, again, I, I know what it feels like to be fake. And mm -hmm. I know what it feels like to be around people that can 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 do the smiles and the glad hands and like mm -hmm. i'm not a politician you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying it's not uh not to shit on politicians or what. what is this rated by the way uh nc17 you're good okay cool cool <laughs> i'm uh you have to like edit out the, use the, all the words you're good although i'm not gonna use them all but maybe it's I mean, you could uh, you know so i uh, you, you know i'm not a net i'm not a huge networker you know what i'm saying i'm not good at it um uh uh so like that's that performative stuff like putting it mm -hmm. on um and i don't like how i feel when i do that now some people get a kick out of it some people actually like they they get off on putting on mm -hmm. the show you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying it's just i don't um and, and so but i do again like to uh 
make people feel comfortable, make people feel um, not go out of my way or, or mm-hmm. sacrifice anything to do it. But I, I, I like to create, it's going back to the smile. Like my mantra, one of my mantras is smile, give thanks, serve others. Mm-hmm. You know, what I'm saying? when you smile, you know, it makes your body feel better. Like I know the science behind the smile. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that's more so why I do it now as, as, as it's therapeutic, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I'm not faking like smile and all your problems go away. No, I'm, li- I literally try to smile as often as possible. Uh, um, literally to just get those, the serotonin and the, and the, and the dopamine flowing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I do my morning breathing um, exercises the last 20 seconds or so I'm, I'm, I'm breathing in through my nose and out in and out through my nose with a smile on my face intentionally. Um, Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I want to, and, and we're in this time in our culture, you know, there's so much divisiveness and, and, and so much distrust and mistrust and, and coldness Mm -hmm. between folks. And you, you fall some of that ice with a smile. So like, you know, it's like, you know, when, when I'm crossing paths and I, and this is new and different for me, like growing up, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm from the streets. And so I was taught that if you see cross paths with somebody, especially another dude, um, and you say, what's up to him, that's a sign of weakness Mm. because you're trying to make peace before war can even happen. You know what I'm saying? Before conflict yeah. and how so the first person to say what's up loses like yeah. if you just you, you know and, and that's how my mindset was and so you don't make eye contact somebody passes you 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 keep it moving and i and like so i know where that comes and so i've tried to do better like when i pass somebody especially somebody uh that looks like me you know uh, now i'm like super intentional i put my hand on my heart and i say like i, I smile i say blessings uh, or I say peace God uh um you know something I try to warm up the the space and the energy between us mm-hmm. and even somebody that doesn't look like me I at least smile at them I'm not gonna right this mm-hmm. <laughs> a hand might not go in my heart and I'm not gonna say peace God <laughs> but <laughs> I'll at least smile at you <laughs> would you consider yourself and then I have a follow-up question would you consider yourself quirky uh you have to define quirky uh, I feel like I'm quirky, like, you know, kind of like, um, not socially awkward in any way, but like, do you feel like at, at home base you are? Oh, when nobody's around? <laughs> yeah. Listen, yes. <laughs> I know I'm, I know the stuff I do when nobody's looking <laughs> and the stuff I do when nobody's looking is very quirky. Uh, <laughs> I sing Barbra Streisand songs at the top of my lungs. She's my favorite. I didn't know this about you. you I liar. love her. You are a liar and a false prophet. Her yeah. and Shaka Khan. I did not know oh, that no. about you. Those are yes. my like two younger. When I was a kid, I was like, they're like, who's your favorite artist? I like 10. I'm talking about Barbra Streisand and Shaka Khan. I'm a late comer to Barbra Streisand. Okay. In my 1920, I was like 1920 when I... Mm-hmm. Well, I knew about her before then, but but my mind got blown. My whole brain got blown out by her. Well, around, I think I was 19. Um, and um, I'm sad because I I don't need to see her live. I want to meet her in person. And yes. I know the window is closing. Like, she's not going to yeah. be around forever. So I don't know. You know, I'm, that would be like a dream come true to just sit down and have a talk. Because she would be so shocked. I think, like, that you know, I'll show her my playlist and it's Wu-Tang Clan, uh, Tupac, <laughs> Barbara Streisand, you know what I'm saying? Like somebody yeah. like me, I think she uh-huh. would be shocked to know that she has had such a profound impact on me as an artist and performer. But anyways, yeah. So sing Barbara Streisand songs, uh, love, uh, you know, top of my lungs. Um, I do, uh, uh, like I watch it for, for exercise. <laughs> I watch these uh, videos called Hip Hop Fit, and and it's you know uh, it, it's for humans, but it's it, you can tell it's like <laughs> towards women. Women are supposed mm-hmm. to be doing it, mm-hmm. and uh, and I'm there popping and doing all yes, the stuff, you know what I'm saying, and I do all the routines and, and 
with no shame. Well, I guess there is some shame because I would never do it in front of an audience. <laughs> but uh, I mean, but I'd be doing it. Uh, <laughs> so that's when when you say quirky, that yes, that quirkiness. Uh, I love that's... knowing that about you. <laughs> Yes, yeah. my favorite Barbra Streisand song, and I want to know yours, is Secondhand Rose, Don't Rain mm-hmm. on My Parade. And then she sang with Celine Dion, and that song is just like a classic. Yeah. So that's Tell Him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I like rain, Don't Rain on My Parade. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Don't uh, tell me not to live. Yeah. Um, yeah. But my absolute favorite is As If We've Never Said Goodbye. Um, mm-hmm. it's, from, uh, it's from Sunset Boulevard. Mm-hmm. And uh, and that was the first song that I heard her do where I was just like, and I saw her, you know, in concert perform it. I'd never heard the song and mm-hmm. I never heard her, you know, I'd probably seen her, ex- I'd probably seen her some something. Uh, I knew she existed, like I said. So mm-hmm. it's probably the first time I ever heard her sing. But actually the first song I heard her sing, which made me even want to say, okay, uh, there's more to this was uh, Send In The Clowns. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, um, uh, as if we never said goodbye, I saw that and I was like, it was like the first time, literally, I can tell you exactly what it was. It was like the first time I ever heard, um, and I'm telling you, uh, yeah. I'm not going nowhere. The first mm-hmm. time you hear that song, whether, mm-hmm. you know, whoever you heard sing it first, mm-hmm. and how it like is like a 12 gauge shotgun right to the chest. Yeah, yeah. Range. Mm-hmm. That, happened when I heard as if we never said goodbye and uh that was 20 years ago and then Mm -hmm. my daughter for her senior senior show uh they do something when she graduated they do a senior show for performers because she's a performing artist too Mm -hmm. Uh, she sang it and uh for her senior show and it was a surprise I did not see that coming Uh on oh it rocked my entire world yeah uh because she fell in love I put her on the Barbara Streisand and she's a, a fan now too. My grandmother, um, I didn't know until she passed away and we were preparing for a funeral that she used to play piano. And mm-hmm. so she used to take me like basketball cu- camps and clinics and, cu- you know, all that stuff. She drove me to Alabama one time and she drove at night, but she literally knew every word to the Barbara Streisand collection. And so we would go back and forth and she had this like beautiful tenor voice. And I mean, it's probably impacted by smoking because she smoked most of her life, but like she had this beautiful tenor voice and we would just sing and sing and sing the whole like trip. And so I love that generational pass down of yeah, that. Yeah. So that's so cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. So, okay. So I'm also thinking of, and I want the people listening to hear, <clears throat> and I think of like your, your house, I wouldn't call it a house party. It's not like that simple, um, yeah, but it's like a cure. It's like the gathering. Right. And so, and then you also have, I facilitated with you as well. So there's like this sweet spot professionally, I think where you are like in your zone, you, you got your poems, um, you got your jokes, you got your activities and you're like flowing. Right. And like, you're in the vibe. And when you have those moments, um, I would, I would, dare to say that those are the moments that you probably feel like your favorite version of yourself professionally. Mm-hmm. How would you define those moments and like that sweet spot moment as a professional or a professional artist, really, you know? Uh-huh. Um, the, what for, for me, how I make it make sense for me um, mm-hmm. is when, when I say, I tell myself it wasn't coming from me, it was coming through me. Mm-hmm. And I know the difference um as a performer as a trainer uh, mm-hmm. i know when i'm saying something or doing something or posturing in some sort of way that's strategized mm-hmm. uh, or strategic like i'm going to say this in this way because i know it'll get this reaction or i'm going to mm-hmm. do it you know and um and there's a difference between when it comes from me and when it's coming through me and when I when I say it's coming through me it's it's more of a pure place Mm -hmm. um and I'm 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 uh you know I'm not doing it for the reaction I'm not doing it for the uh check um 
I'm not doing it uh, to make an impression. Uh, I'm not doing it to get the likes or, or whatever the follows. Uh, I'm, I'm doing it uh, just from a place of, uh, of, of love, love for who I'm in the space with, love for the craft. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just, uh, and not that I get to that sweet spot all the time or every time or most, it may be not even most of the time, but mm -hmm. I've been there and I aspire to be there more times than not. Yeah, for sure. For yeah. sure. So I've, um, I know I met you, it was a Lincoln theater. We were doing, um, we had a session. I was in the incubator program for artists and you came in and I was like who is this dude like what like you were like I have this book and these are the things you need to do and this is what you you should you know pursue and pursue your passion and not you know the money and I really resonated with that um with that perspective and that framework and so obviously we've been you know road dogs since then <laughs> um but like how would you define your why um, and, and I know we want to talk about how that shows up and how you present your brand, you know, to the world, talking marketing and all that strategy, but tell me your why and, and tell me, just tell me your why first. We'll go, we'll start. My there. why is easy. My why is impact. And I can tell you how I got to that mm -hmm. because like you said, um, before, and you probably have heard me on, uh, well, your audience hasn't, so that so it needs to be said again. Um, like you mentioned when you were doing my intro, poetry, comedy, uh, written two books, uh, worked in film and and still work in film. Uh, uh, you know, speaking. I, I, I you know I, I get invited to do speaking engagements all the time. Um, all these different areas, marketing, uh, my company. So I've got all these different uh sandboxes that i play in mm -hmm. and um there was a window of time where where like uh i will wake up one morning and based on my how i felt that day i'm all in on comedy and then the next day i wake up i'm all in on spoken word and hip-hop the next day i'm wake up i'm all in on film and um and it it wasn't I, I I didn't give myself enough time to gain any traction in any of those spaces, right? Mm -hmm. My homeboy gave me a book um, to read it's called The One Thing because he observed it. Um, he noticed that like I'm just easily everywhere by myself. <laughs> yes. You know what I'm saying? And and uh, and uh, so he gave me the book called The One Thing, and uh, I opened the book and I read the first page. Like you know how like some books have like a quote on the very first page or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I get it. I'm done. I really literally could have stopped at just the quote it had at the front of the book <laughs> and the quote. And I'm going to misquote it. But you know, it's like a Russian proverb. And it said, the man who chases two rabbits doesn't catch either one. Mm -hmm. um, and then the one thing goes on to frame and, and parse out and help you clarify, identify what your one thing is. So by the end of the book, my one thing was impact. That's mm -hmm. what I. And so then that, that gave clarity and criteria, criteria, that's the right word. And that gave criteria for what I would engage in when it came to comedy, spoken word, hip hop, film, uh, marketing. So if it's not about impacting my people and my community, I'm not going to do it. So, you know, oh, okay. So comedy clubs, y'all gone. It's mm -hmm. no more comedy clubs, no more bars and no more open mind, nothing like that, because that's not about impact. That's about entertainment. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, movies that don't align with my core values. Y'all are gone. Yeah, the money's great, but I can't be involved anymore. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, so it, it, it all became about impact. And so then when my one thing became impact, then the question is, how can I find creative ways if that's the one sandbox I'm going to play in? Um, how can I find creative place to use comedy for impact, to use poetry for impact, to use film for impact, for use my writing for impact? All of those things have to find their way into this sandbox versus just playing in all these different ones. 
Yeah, that was so instrumental for me because I was in there as a performance artist, as a author, a poet, and I also did some production, right? So like I was trying to figure out what does this look like and where does it, and that was so helpful to me just to be like that that helped me determine my yes and no. Like hearing that from you and hearing all the opportunities you've had didn't didn't some you used to work for Russell Simmons? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. So like knowing the access you've had and the opportunities you've had to to make money as well as opportunities you've had to really make an impact and knowing that that has guided your decision making. And I mean, you know, who knows around that story, whether sometimes you're like, damn, I wish I would have decided something different in this moment, right? Like if my bank account looks a certain way, I might be like, ooh. But I think ultimately, and this is, um, <clears throat> Donna James says this, is like, if you pursue your passion, the money will come, right? And so just knowing that and trusting in that, but that has helped me a ton in making decisions. Like what I'm going to do. Don, yeah. If we're giving Donna our flowers, what she told me, uh, when we had a sit down chat, um, uh, she said, you do well when you do right. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I, I've anchored myself in, in that, um, uh, we were talking about the work I was doing in film and, mm-hmm. and, and from, a from, from a behind the scenes standpoint. Uh, and, and so she gave me that gem that I like, if I had to pay her a dollar for every time I've used that line in a training or workshop or presentation, yep. she would be a millionaire. Well, I mean, she's, already, <laughs> she's on her way. <laughs> I mean, right. We don't want to put her, we don't yeah, put her yeah. budget out there, but right, like, right. <laughs> doing all right. She Mama would, James. Yeah. Yeah. She would, uh, she'd be, uh, you know, she'd have a nice bonus. <laughs> yes. Yes. She'd be good. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay. So we got impact. I love that. So as you're thinking, and we've done and been a part of some really cool projects and I love the, the disparity and diversity and within the projects that we've completed. I know you do even much more in a community when you say, if it doesn't impact my community um, or my people, is that your vision for community? What's your vision for our community and your, your community and your people? Um, Self-sustainment. Say more. You're going to have to say more on that one. Uh, Here's what I'll say. The Amish do it. (laughs) Listen, have you had Uh, Amish bread, though? Speaking of, it's not it's not great. (laughs) (laughs) I would like to sustain ourselves with seasoning, though. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Yeah. you know there are uh, communities that 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 do it unapologetically. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying, and and have a template and a and a framework uh, for for that. Um, and, and so that's that's the vision. That's the dream come true for me. Will it happen in my lifetime? Probably not. Maybe, but um, I think there are pockets of opportunity we just got to get out of our own way and a mm-hmm. lot and you know it, we got enough other people in our way yeah that you know <laughs> um and i think maybe uh, and we could get into the weeds but um with this but when when you, when you engage or or i'm, I'm just not sold Hundred percent sold out and uh, on on the capitalistic system. Uh, I, I, or I'm I, I'm not a believer in it. I don't know what the alternative is. You know, I don't know if you know whether it's socialism or Marxism or whatever. I'm not saying they got it absolutely right. I don't think anybody any um, of them got it absolutely right. But we do live in a culture and in a society where capitalism is gospel. Uh, is the inerrant, infallible uh, uh, gospel, and and uh, and it's just uh, I'm uh, I just believe the exact opposite. <laughs> um, not that not again, not that I have an alternative fully fleshed out, but I know that ain't it. And so what happens is when we when we uh, as a community 
look for uh, sustainment or, or, or sustaining your uh, self-sustaining opportunities. We're still entering into those experiments mm -hmm. with the capitalism framework mm -hmm. at, at the at the root, and I I just don't think that is sustainable. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just don't think that works. I agree. And I mean, I, I've moved to the corporate sector from the nonprofit sector, and that has been so interesting um, to experience. And like, to some degree, I've had to remove my attachment to outcomes um, in that. And this is an interesting topic to talk about, like now versus maybe six months ago when I was still in the nonprofit sector. Um, but I think I don't I don't think capitalism is it right. It's hierarchical. Um, it, it is not community and socially responsible. Right. And I just think I don't know what to call it. I don't know if it's like a. I don't have a framework quite yet. All I know is like, OK, so I have this system, this language, if you will, of capitalism. And then I'm like, OK, I'm going to I have to live in it. This is the language I speak. It's the language I was raised in. It's the language I speak. Do I think something else is possible? Yes. So what do I do in those microcosms and those spaces where I think Columbus has a really does a really good job? You know, shout out to Zora's house, shout out to Maroon Arts Group, um, shout out to uh, the Box Park, right, with Maroon Arts Group, like and, and all these spaces. Um, I don't know, like the nest, we don't have the nest anymore, sadly enough, like you're, you're the gatherings. Um, I have some shows like little things, Scott, Scott Woods, right. And street like guild, like we have these places that are trying to create space for us to exist and then ultimately thrive. And there are so many barriers to that. And you have like, you know, the two, well, I think it's like the 15% now because COVID kind of, made more people billionaires uh by some different <laughs> exploitation or whatever whatever happened but i just i think that around the socialism thing it's like we can only and we do get in our own way we can only do so much around it without taking all the responsibility on for yourself it's like okay what can i do what's in my control what am i able to curate what am i able to create that has joy that has celebration that has positivity and abundance mindset, even if it's not financial abundance, where people can like rest and feel joy and at rest with their nervous system. You know what I mean? And that's what I try to do with the gift exchange is, yep. is you know, I don't want anybody coming uh, uh, into the space feeling like they owe. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm in a place and position where I can create that kind of space from a financial Mm -hmm. uh, you know, from a financial uh, standpoint, um, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I would never charge. Uh, I would never, you, you know, I would, I want people to feel free and feel at peace and feel at rest and, mm -hmm. and feel joy and feel love mm -hmm. with the hopes that they're able to carry that peace and that joy and that rest and love beyond these beyond these walls you know what i'm saying um again i don't want it to be powerful i want it to be powerful and therapeutic mm. uh, and the feedback that i get from people is uh uh how how it was that that how therapeutic it was i was at mm -hmm. a i was at a uh uh dinner the other night uh, uh at adela's shout out to adela's black mm -hmm. woman um, and just, uh, four or five of us had gotten together to, to, to break bread. And then one of the, uh, a friend of mine who comes to the gathering, she was there and, and she was sharing with another person who was at the, uh, uh, at the dinner, but had never been to one of my, uh, one of the gift exchanges. And she's like, literally choking up and like, tears are not, not mm. like getting choked up, but like tears start coming down her face. Uh, as she's trying to explain the gift exchange and i'm just like what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> I'm like wow like you know but you don't know you right. know what I'm saying? like right. and i do it for that you know what i'm saying i don't do it to get that kind of 
uh, get those flowers. I just do it because I need it. You know what I'm saying? I need the love and the peace mm-hmm. and the that comes from the experience. Mm-hmm. And so, but I've, you, you know, and then I've heard uh, about people that have come to the gift exchange. Uh, um, uh, the last one I had, uh, 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 a young lady was there and she came and gave me a hug and said, thank you so much for introducing me to so-and-so because she was able to get me an interview with, uh, with this. And now I got a job. And then she coached me on how to do the interview so that I could uh, get like uh, $8 more than what I was supposed to get. I was like, well, I didn't, and they didn't know each other until they met. Right. And so that was an exchange of gifts. And, and, you know, those are one of like several, you know, a whole lot of, uh, um, uh, uh, stories and anecdotes that I've heard. And that's all. Those are like impact stories. That's qualitative impact measured right there. Yeah. So, um, so that's all, that's, that's all I want, um, uh, is, uh, is people to leave better than how they showed up. And Mm -hmm. that's always the goal. It could all be so simple. What do you think is the biggest challenge in our community, um, and with our people around that? around um getting peace joy rest love uh creating that and having that what do you think is our biggest barrier or challenge i mean pick one (laughs) but um (laughs) the the one i'll pick is trying to again operate in a system that it is not broken the system isn't broken you know we talk about all these different reforms whether it's educational reform police reform health reform reform uh insinuates that we're going to keep the main ingredients we're just going to tweak some stuff it just there's some things that need tweaked no it's the system is not broken the system is doing exactly what it's designed to do. So re- reforming it, we've seen, you know, what we've seen reformed uh, slavery. Slavery <laughs> has been reformed mm-hmm. uh, from the day it, quote unquote, uh, you know, was abolished. Right. Ever since that day, we've seen the reformation of slavery. Mm-hmm. You know? with the black codes and Jim Crow era, uh, uh, vagrancy laws were one of the first thing that came into effect right after uh, slavery was abolished. So they abolished slavery. Next thing you know, you have vagrancy laws where it's Mm -hmm. illegal to be homeless. But what did you just do? You just forced all these slaves out into the streets into what? Homelessness. Wow. And now you're going to turn around and arrest them for the condition you just put them in and put them back on the plantation. Because we know the 13th Amendment uh, abolished slavery except for uh, punishment for crime. So Mm -hmm. it reformed from vagrancy laws and and the Black Code and Jim Crow laws uh, to the prison industrial complex that we're still under the reformation of slavery to this day in 2023. So Mm. things does nothing, right? And I've seen those same systems be corrupt when it was, there were no white people involved. (laughs) Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So like you said, as you're bringing in the same structure or infrastructure, I think as a like process, processes are neutral when we start to add people into there with their biases and their corruption and their like greed, that's when I think it, I mean, obviously that's how we were founded and started. So it's almost like, how do you peel that back 400 years? Right, right, right. You know? Again, so we live in a Christian society um, and I'm not shitting on Christians, but uh, because we are, let me put quotes around Christian society. Right, Christian, right, right. You know, this is a Christian nation or whatever they say. Mm-hmm. Um, the belief that because Christians believe, and I grew up Christian, they believe that the Bible from page one to page, whatever is the inerrant, infallible, uh, word of God, like from the first page to the last, it is all God breathed and 
like an uh, instruction manual too. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing. There's there's no falsehoods or fallacies or in inconsistencies or inaccuracies within the Bible. That's what fundamental Christians believe. Every word of it, every jot and tittle is true. <laughs> um, they also believe that about our Constitution. Right. Every jot and tittle is the infallible, inerrant word of God. Like they believe this is that that Constitution is just as holy as the Holy Bible. And without any nuance around who it was created for. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Without any nuance, without any gray area, without any idea that maybe we should evolve then and, and and reconsider uh the context within with 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 which this document was created no there's no you cannot challenge or question uh anything about it and you know so you know that's a that's a barrier that uh, you know until we break free from that that's an obstacle and barrier uh um another yeah. obstacle so it's destroy and rebuild now destroy insinuates an act of violence so i'm trying to be careful about that where you ask you know you know what what's the answer we can't um reform these institutions and in systems we have to rebuild or recreate or not even recreate create build or create yeah build and create new systems new institutions uh with a new uh and different um mindset and motive as to why those these systems and in institutions are being created mm -hmm. That's we could probably no, biggie. no biggie just just <laughs> generational stuff just in the way yeah. it's so when they move to mars we when they all move to mars or the moon <laughs> or whatever comes first then mm -hmm. we, we'll get left with whatever to figure out i don't know i don't think the aliens really are taking i think they're taking us they want to kick it with us i don't think they i don't think they want to kick it with the no, billionaires and the leaders the framers of these institutions and systems and the, uh -huh. the ones who yes thrive and profit and prosper from the way things are mm -hmm. uh, when, when they get on their uh shuttle and yeah. their rocket ship and take off and leave us behind uh, you know, they can take their systems and institutions with them and Indeed. We'll, we'll find a new or not. Yes. a new. Actually, we won't find a new. We'll find an original. We'll go back to the original. Yes. Know, so, uh, we'll go back to the original, uh, mm -hmm. you know, 500,000 years ago. Absolutely. Uh, you know, so. Yeah, I, I look forward to that. And when I think about like what's possible, I think I do have the luxury and privilege of of dreaming and having some, some room, uh, you know, financially. And I think that's so interesting because the thing about poverty, low income, generational trauma, all those things is that they keep you from the ability to vision and dream. And so like, how can we come up with new systems when we weren't the ones to create these messed up systems in the first place? But like, how can we do that without like, time and space to vision and dream and it's literally that have we ever talked about that have no uh -uh. Time and, oh no it was the text message remember yes where, yeah i was like i know we've had this conversation it was remember mm -hmm. we were going, uh yeah i was i was i was uh i watched uh, what did i watch i watched your video my dream yeah my talk on reverie yeah yeah oh, yeah. yeah yeah you're creative morning yeah. uh -huh. and right so yeah um I can go in on that. I don't know how much time we have. You got uh, it. Go ahead. We only got a couple more questions and then the scenario. You're good. But yeah, you just hit the nail on the head. Um, I read this book called Guns, Germs, and Steel uh, by Dr. Jared Diamond. Mm -hmm. And he's an anthropologist and studying. Uh, he did 20 years of research in uh, Papua New Guinea. And what he was trying to figure out was why, because uh, he's in there amongst the people. And he said, why are, is this population and other indigenous populations, why are they walking around in loincloths, um, using handmade bows and arrows, using handmade tools to, you know, mm -hmm. for agriculture, and you have this other population, white people, that are, have already been to the moon and back, uh, you know, are headed to Mars, that have advanced technologically, um, 
in astronomically uh, in astronomical ways, far, far, far beyond these folks. Are they smarter? Are, are they more creative? What is it that makes white people, has given white people the ability to advance so far beyond these indigenous populations and cultures? And, and he said, it can't be because they're, they're smarter. It can't be uh -huh. because they're more creative. What is, what, what, what's the difference, right? And um, his theory, and I want to overemphasize theory, was <laughs> that the, he, and I'm, I'm going to break it down in the way that makes sense for me. He basically said the first people to domesticate plants and animals were going to win. Um, and, you know, he talks about the migration north from, from Africa, because we all came from Africa. Uh -huh. And, you know, there was the migration north um, to, to, to the north, you know, what we now know is like the European Middle East and the European areas and, and the discovery of wheat. And, you know, you hear about the Fertile Crescent, which is, uh, you know, which they say is the birthplace of, uh, what is it, cows, chickens, um, sheep, and horses, uh, I think. all Basically, all these animals, they found, they discovered all these animals you could domesticate. You can't domesticate a tiger. You know what I'm saying? You can sort of domesticate a, an elephant. You can't domesticate a water buffalo. Um, and then you found all these plants, wheat, you, they found wheat discovered, uh, 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 I think, wheat and corn. Uh -huh. And so the first people to domesticate plants and animals were going to win because at that, as they further, as they migrated further north, they went from being nomadic to static, uh -huh. right? So no, I'm no longer following the herds and following the seasons. Um, I, I'm, I'm now stationary. I'm establishing for the first time, I'm establishing territory, property, uh -huh. border. Domain. Mm -hmm. domain and now i have to protect these borders and domain but when you start when you move from hunting and gathering to planting and harvesting and storing now that i'm harvesting and storing what do i have for the first time ever in the history of life time right if i'm hunting and gathering i'm not hunting and gathering and storing i'm just hunting and gathering for that day for the day yeah day and then the next day i hunt and gather and then hunt and gather and hunt and gather i'm not storing so mm. i don't have i literally don't have time right when i'm hunt harvesting and storing i now have time and what do we do with our time we imagine mm -hmm. we imagine ways to evolve ways to advance ways to take over more territory mm -hmm. right um and grow what we have uh, and, 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 and so fast forward to 2023 people in poverty, they're hunters and gatherers mm. because every day, every day I'm hustling every day. Mm -hmm. I'm hustling. every day I'm hunting and gathering. I don't have time to move forward, to advance, to progress. Right. Mm. Literally mm. comes down to that. Nothing's changed in 500,000 years. Wow. Rich people have the ability to harvest and store. And so they mm -hmm. have the time to figure out new ways to get richer and richer and richer. Poor people mm -hmm. don't. Poor people are, are hunters and gatherers. This is perfect. Not in the ways that it has shown up in our world and our lives and our culture and in our people. This makes a lot of sense. So I appreciate that reference and analogy. And I'm going to sit with that for a little while. Um, Let's just that's... do it right here, right here on the podcast. Let's just sit with it. Let's just sit with it. Yeah, yeah. Good seven. Hunters and, and gatherers. <laughs> and I mean, there was a time in my life where I could definitely see, even though I came from middle class living, that I was in, my, you know, there's always like this hustle space in your in your professional career where you work longer hours where you say yes to more things than you probably want to. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the hunting and gathering phase. And then hopefully people get to a place in their work where they have, they can harvest and store. Well, that's because culturally we have a, 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 a more mentality. That's mm -hmm. how our mindset is more. What we've been taught is more money, more power, more fame, more status, more stuff. That's, 
in our that's embedded in our DNA more and more and more. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's in our music, it's in our movies, it's mm -hmm. in our art, it's in it's in corporate America. You know, greed is good. That's a famous line from uh, the movie Wall Street, right? Mm -hmm. More, more, more money, power, fame, status, and stuff. Um, and so I've worked, spent the last seven, eight years detaching from the more mentality. Now, people look at people that are close to me and have been in shared space with me. They're like, oh, that's easy for you to say because you got more than a lot of people. Right. Uh, and so I understand that dichotomy. But I like when I tell you I am not driven by more um, like and it's funny as a business owner. Uh, like it is so hard for me to try and I tell my team I'm like look uh, if y'all want to figure out creative ways to generate new business and make new money that more power to you I just don't have it in me <laughs> like, <laughs> like that's nice I, about having a team though yeah yeah I have enough I, like uh, you know I, I try to uh, you know my I enough is enough enough is more than enough and, and everybody's enough is different um but like uh you know i i i've never just i'm and i look back and i i think about like throughout my life anytime i try to intentionally go out and make more money i lose i end up losing it. oh yeah absolutely 100 you know of the time uh, for me I, other people they can have that money mindset and make it happen I just, I, and I know the formula for me personally. I like, I know what it would take for me. I'm not a millionaire, you know what I'm saying? Um, but I know the formula that, I, 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 to speak in the third person, Javier could be a millionaire uh -huh. uh, in the next year. I just don't want to commit. I just can't, when I know what it'll cost, I can't do it. Because well, there's a cost to everything, you know? Uh -huh. My time. My wealth is my time. Uh -huh. Like, um, you look at my bank account, I don't have millions, but you look at my time account, man, uh, I can be a, on a podcast at one o'clock in the afternoon, <laughs> somebody I love, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I can go to the movies in the middle of the day if I want, I, you know, I can read, I, you know, uh, and I would, I can spend time with my, my family, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, my dad, uh, I just spent a week in Texas uh, uh, my dad's from Texas and uh -huh. he, he wanted to go. He doesn't have the resource to go. Call me and ask me, can, can, would you be able to take me to Texas? Absolutely. Uh -huh. Let's, let's go. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, took him down there. I was supposed to stay three days. Um, realized real quickly if I stayed three, cause he wanted to stay seven. He, he, he was, I booked his flight to be there seven days, him and my mom actually. And I was uh -huh. only planning, I booked my flight to be there three days. The first day, I'm like, why did I do that? I need uh -huh. to be here the whole time. They're going to need me way past day three. Uh -huh. um, and, and so I stayed. I just changed my flight and stayed. And I, you know, and and did I uh, did I lose money doing that? No. But did I make money? No. Um, but I right. did have time. I had the time to do it. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? And I will never trade that. And that's what I would have to give up in order to be a millionaire. And I could do it. Yeah. I just, there's no way you could. There's nothing enticing about that for me. There's nothing more rewarding than that autonomy of time. And I love the ability to be able to get back to your parents. Mm -hmm. um, that is like, you know, my dad is going through, I mean, he recently finished chemo, but like um, my mom is like, she's going to outlive us all. But like just being able to even little things, like if I ever buy her dinner, I'm like, this is awesome that I'm able to to do that. And while you're still here, I think that's the abundance that I'm talking about when I'm talking about abundance versus scarcity, because that's so rich, right? Like to be able to do to do those things and spend time in ways that people can't if they're in a typical eight to five, right? right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I could have spent that week going after contracts, going mm -hmm. after, you know, money. Nah, I'm straight. I like how I, I love what I got to experience. I love that. And so I saw recently, you know, 
I'm always, I'm keeping up with my people. So I've seen you recently doing some social media. So speaking of keeping up and production, let's talk about your recent journey in social media and why you're doing it and that you have to do it anyway. You can even do musings of social media as a whole if you'd like. Um, I think we all know what it is, but um, tell me about it. How's that going? No, it's a necessary evil. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, so you know, I I understand that's you got to go where go where the people are, um, and and so uh, so that's where I'm at on IG specifically how Javier thinks, and I literally just yesterday I think started a TikTok, which good luck with getting me to uh, post or and or I'm definitely not gonna scroll through, but or I hope. I hope I don't because it's so addictive and 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 for me it's unhealthy. I haven't like, I haven't found TikTok to be as addictive as other folks have. Oh okay. I am I like the quickness of Instagram and the community of Facebook. And that may be age according. Um because yeah. you know, like I find a lot of engagement and community on Facebook because people my age are on there. But IG, I like the quickness. But TikTok, it's like three minutes is a really long time to listen to somebody talk. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I I realize like if I really care about young people, they need to be able to find me. Again, do I want my because uh, I do a lot of speaking engagements. I just spoke at Audubon's freshman mm-hmm. orientation last night. I do that every year, and I had to I had to remind myself: look, you can give them a powerful moment, or you can be part of a therapeutic movement in their lives by meeting mm-hmm. them where they're at in their own IG. And 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 so, um, you know, uh, so that's why. But I also know how, how I have to regulate my engagement and like uh, to keep myself safe, you know, mm-hmm. very toxic space for me. And like literally what I have to do, this is what I, I'm this is what I do every day, <laughs> every day. I post, I install Instagram. After I do my morning rituals, which is meditation and three day, three pages of free writing, mm. uh, I'll install Instagram, uh, do my post. I'll scroll through and like and comment on, you know, different people's things that uh, I'll spend about five minutes doing that, liking and comment, engaging with Instagram. And then I uninstall it. Because I can't have it on my phone all day because I'm going to be going and checking the traction that my stuff has got. I'm going uh-huh. for the dopamine hits. You know what I'm saying? I yep. need to, So I literally install it, post, scroll through, like and comment and react, uh, respond to messages I get or whatever. And then I uninstall it uh, until the next day. Um, and that's my routine. I have that's to dope. do it. It can't be any other way um for me so um so yeah it's just meeting the people where they're at is yeah is what i is why i'm engaging and you know there's shit on there that's toxic i need to invade those spaces you know i know the young people are being exposed to all kind of toxicity and so i have to break it up break it up and Mm -hmm. and and give them something a little more healthy to snack on. Yeah, that has been an experience. Um, had a coach walk me through kind of what I wanted. And it was like, okay, podcast, Patreon, eh, probably could have more engagement there. And then like a social media presence for that. And so it's been really interesting moving some of that personal to the professional over on over on that so that's been interesting and I it's um I think everybody has their formula for it and it's good that you know yourself because it could easily be a like rabbit hole Mm -hmm. (laughs) that you can't get out of yeah for sure I've been down there I've been down that rabbit hole you don't want to go back nope (laughs) all right so um as we're talking, any any wisdom that's living inside of you that needs to get out or wants to be said in this moment before we do our situational hot seat? <laughs> <laughs> wisdom that needs to get out and uh, wants to be said. Um, I got these new tattoos. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Let's see him. Look at that. <laughs> new All right. Who's your person? Where'd you get him? Uh, Ooh, those are great. Uh, he's uh, uh, a young brother from the north side of Columbus. Okay. Uh, but yeah. Um, I, I like gotta, those. I gotta give it. So this is my, this is not new wisdom. It's old wisdom. It's just new to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, studying my, um, uh, so I need these daily reminders and I'm like the best way to, for me to be reminded daily is to put it on my skin. My thoughts mm-hmm. words, and deeds are seeds. Mm-hmm. Uh, think in love, act in peace or think in love, speak in truth, act in peace, react in peace. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're like, well, why, you, you know, you can, you know, you can just write those down on paper or hang them on the wall. You know, I don't, I'm not all tatted up. Like I don't have sleeves or anything. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, it's intentional. One, they're reminders for me mm-hmm. and it makes them permanent. You know, um, it, it keeps me in check. Mm-hmm. There's in places, you know, I, I, I got a homeboy. He loves going to the strip clubs. Right. I'm just being honest. And we can do that. Sure. Yeah. We can abs- I want that. I want the right, truth right. only, actually. <laughs> and um, and he's always asking. It's just not my thing. I've never been into it. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm not into it. It's not a uh, enjoyable experience for me. But something as silly as that, like I'm uh, you know, now that I have these, I'm like, it's not even how do you how does a dude with these on his uh, on his hands walk into it <laughs> doing okay. this? You know what I'm saying? Conscious, right, right, right conscious right. consumer. I don't know. Right, I like right. strip clubs, but I don't go to them often. Yeah, it's, yeah, um, yeah. yeah, it's like a random experience here and there, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I get so it. It just this kind of keeps me in check mm-hmm. in, in in that way and many in in many ways. Just how I act and interact with people, mm-hmm. and it's, a, it's also a conversation starter because they're so noticeable. Because again, I'm not flooded with tattoos everywhere. Mm-hmm. People see them, they're like, oh, what's that? And then now we get to have a conversation. Not That's about dope. me, but about the the wisdom and the idea and the philosophy behind this. You know what I'm saying? So I'm oh. loving having those engagements with people. When did you get those? It's been about four or five months, I think. Oh, yeah. I've been seeing them. Yeah. So That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that with us. Okay. So um, the last part of this podcast is that you give me a situation. It could be created or a real one. Um, you know, remove or track names if that's necessary. Um, but a situation where maybe things didn't go the way you wanted to, or you're just curious about how I would have reacted in that. And then we'll talk about how you reacted or would react. And we'll just talk through the scenario. But um, as we talk about culture and things like that, we want to, you know, give different options for how we can deal with things and different scenarios that are like real in life. So I'm collecting scenarios because it's great for facilitation. But um, yeah, I want to hear a scenario that you have for me to to walk through. (laughs) Turn the table. You get to be the interviewer for a moment. Okay. Um, you're walking down the street, you're walking down the sidewalk, um, you see somebody come in the other direction. We talked about this earlier with the eye contact and the, Mm -hmm. says what's up first loses. You see somebody coming. It's 2023. Okay. You're walking down a street in a affluent neighborhood. (laughs) Um, you know what I'm saying? Okay. You see someone approaching you. Um, they have a boom box on their shoulder. <laughs> like it's 1981. Uh-huh. Big ass boom box. As they get closer, and you realize they're a POC as well. Uh-huh. Uh, um, can't really figure out exactly, uh, you know. Uh, their ethnicity. Their ethnicity. You, you know what they're not. Okay. Um, <laughs> or all the way not. <laughs> A boombox on their shoulder. As they get even closer, you realize the said boombox is blasting Baby Got Back. <laughs> As they cross paths with you, you can't help but look. 
right? Mm -hmm. This is very abnormal circumstances and situation mm -hmm. for 2023. As a as you cross with them, uh, the moment you all mm -hmm. crash, uh, they look at you. Say, what the fuck are you looking at? And and do like that. And what do you do? And then they just keep moving. Um, um my adaptive strategies, because I'm probably gonna be like making eye contact and like smiling because that's cool, right? That that I was yeah. born in that era. Like I wanna like dope, what's up? You know? Um, and i I'm whether I'm walking alone, I think could be different whether I'm walking with somebody, because I might be like, oh look, it's like a boombox. And I'll be like, oh man. I was I was looking at your boombox. Like I would probably just say, like <laughs> you're literally <laughs> yeah. Like I'd be like, I mean, I was looking at your boombox. I think it's cool. You yeah. know what I mean? And then that sometimes that can de-escalate. I'm pretty good at de-escalating situations, unfortunately, unfortunately. But um, I'd probably be like, okay, like I was just looking at your boombox. You good? Like you know, I might I might ask some questions. I think it would depend on how like our size comparison, like if I felt yeah. like, like they were like ready to fight, yeah. um, but I'd be smiling. And so if they, if they came at me like that, I'd probably be like, yo, I was looking at your boom box. You look like you're having a good time. You're a party. You're a walking party. Um, you know, like I'd probably try to let them know that there was no ill intent or malice, you know, with me. Uh -huh. But um, I also have been known to freeze and be like, Oh my God. You know, like I might, I might freeze um, and be depending on if I'm with somebody else, be like, okay. Or I might be like, geez, you know, like what happened? What, what happened to you? Like, what do you need? I don't know. I might ask questions, but some form or fashion, I'll either freeze or be like, I answer the question. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. that happened this happened to you? Two weeks ago. Really? Walking through my neighborhood. So that's why I was uh, like, you know, my neighborhood. So I do. that exact thing happened. And uh, I was like, I did what you, I mean, I, I, I jumped because like somebody jumps at you. Yeah, you, like, you oh, you. I'm like, whoa. And I'm like, and I wasn't alone. I had somebody with me, one of my best friends. She and I went, went to on a walk. And yeah. Uh -huh. And it, it, you know, it startled me. It didn't mm -hmm. scare, it startled me. And then I turned around and he kept walking. And was muttering under his breath, uh, I'll fuck you up, I'll kill you, motherfucker, and just all this stuff. But he kept walking. And so clearly he was not well, you know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, it came out of no, well, I mean, you got a boom box, blasting baby got back, you know, you're checking some boxes in terms, yeah. of, in terms of your wellness, you know what I'm saying? And he's got a scowl on his face. He did have a scowl on his face uh, when he was approaching. So, um, uh yeah I, I i had to make sure she was safe and then right. you, and then i froze or i didn't freeze but i turned around and you know waited to see where this was going i didn't say i didn't say hey i like your boombox i didn't say that <laughs> um uh i said what the f you know what i'm saying and he kept walking yeah yeah so i it. am like in some ways like that's happening in a, a relatively affluent neighborhood right yeah. um and I live in the same like relativity affluence of neighborhood, a um, little bit north. Mm -hmm. But but when I think about that, like I'm I'm thinking of, and I know the media represents it as if it's worse than it is. But I think to some degree, there is an element of an unhingedness that is coming with folks in 2023 after surviving a pandemic um, that is still you know impacting us after surviving those, you know, racism was denoted a health crisis in 2020, right? Right, right. before the pandemic. And then it's like, boom, now we're experiencing it even more exasperated. I think there's a level of unhingedness um, and, uh, and yeah, lack, I, lack I, of I, mental healthness that like is concerning. Un unhingedness, everybody's on edge. Mm -hmm. It's either you're with me or against me. You know what I'm saying? When you have that coming from the top down, you, you, you know, in terms of our leadership, mm -hmm. uh, we had a president in office that declared fellow Americans enemies, mm -hmm. his enemies, enemies of the country, enemies of our freedom, enemy, 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 enemy. 
uh, and not only Americans, but non-Americans, all Americans and, or, you know, a segment of the American population and pretty much the entire non-American population mm -hmm. were declared, not insinuated, literally verbally declared the enemy. Mm -hmm. uh, that does something, you know what I'm saying? It does. And that's, that's really why I started this podcast is because I wanted to model and mirror conversations that I was getting to have where I don't experience like the things I see on social media, like in airplanes and I fly a lot, I travel a lot. Like I don't see that type of behavior as much. I did see it in the nonprofit sector, of course, this is a lot of crisis. Um, but that, you know, was explainable. Like that was mental health. That was a lack of resources, a lack of housing, like whatever that was, there were, you know, multiple factors included, but I wanted to model something different because I've had these really wonderful relationships continue to build and grow and be able to do some really cool collaborative stuff together. And I wanted to show that because we're not okay. Like as a people collectively, like we're just, we're not okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Well, I very much appreciate your presence and time with me. I know it is valuable, more valuable than silver and gold, my friend. Thank you so much for your time. Um, and yeah, I look forward to continuing collaboration with you and seeing what, what we will create in the years to come. Watch it. Watch what happens. Mm -hmm.